the burden of China's aging population is increasing pressure to reform the country's pension system. However, financial analysts say many people are confused about the impact of potential changes. Officials have indicated that pension saving rate could be cut from 11 percent to 8 percent in the new year. Our reporter Xu Xing finds out what this means for pensioners' hip pockets. Since the last round of pension reforms in 1997. The system has come under pressure from a population that's aging and an economy that's restructuring. Currently, China is facing the problem of higher average life expectancy, and the reform of state-owned companies, which brings more early retired people. In turn, the burden on social pension pool is getting heavier. Retirees draw pensions in two parts. One portion from social fund equal to 20% of the local average wage. The other part is drawn from an individual account. It's funded by the employee's 8% wage contribution and employers who add a further 3%. But employees could lose that 3%. The drop to three percent paid by the companies will be allocated to the social pension pool, which in turn broadens the financing resource for the social pension pool. The government now manages the social and individual pools together, but to ensure it can pay out on individual accounts, it wants to separate the management. The separation of individual accounts from the social pooling will help to keep the employees from financing the current retirees. Therefore, although the 3% cut in pension savings rate will cause immediate loss to individuals, from the long-term prospect, future retirees will be able to self-finance in the pension schemes. Experts say a supportive financial infrastructure is in large demand because it could provide workers with various pension plans, such as corporate pension, personal pension insurance, and government bonds, which will in turn relax the burden of huge pension debt for the government. Xu Xing for BizWatch. Pension funds, whether public or private, form the core of most countries' retirement plans. Maturing populations are more closely scrutinizing their investments, and pension fund management and performance is getting special attention worldwide. This week, I interviewed Stephen Fisher from J.P. Morgan Asset Management. He explained how pension fund capital should be best invested, and how age affects the investor's choice of portfolio. In your opinion, how should a country's pension fund be properly managed and invested? Um, that's a good question. I think I can draw on some examples from some of the other countries.、Right. For instance, you know, we find around Asia that many different pension corporations or、uh, government pension funds have a very significant domestic bias. That is, they invest significantly in domestic bond markets or、mm-hmm. significantly in, in domestic equity markets,、mm-hmm. and probably too much of, of a bias towards domestic assets.、Um, we would look towards. Uh, perhaps looking for international diversification,、mm-hmm. investing in not just domestic bonds but also in international bonds as well as international equities,、mm-hmm. and perhaps looking to some of the other broader asset classes,、mm-hmm. um, property internationally. Just the, the idea of building a portfolio which is very diversified, both in terms of、um, domestic and interna- international assets. Now, why do you think these countries are focusing more on domestic assets? I think、um, if you look at, say, Malaysia,、mm-hmm. the EPF there, which is a, a pension fund for employees for, of the government,、right. um, the idea is the pension assets are there also to try and promote domestic growth and development.、Mm-hmm. And so using、um, domestic assets, pension fund to invest in domestic assets and, and develop the economy.、Mm-hmm. Now, in principle, it's a, it's a good idea. But if you're a final pension、um, uh, beneficiary, you want to ensure that when you retire, you have sufficient assets or sufficient benefits to be able to like fund your retirement.、Mm-hmm. And what you find in cases like Malaysia is that domestic bond or domestic stock volatility can be very, very high,、mm-hmm. and therefore you have quite significant variation in in the value of the pension fund, which you don't need to bear that sort of risk. So you're saying if we Invest some part of this fund into the international market. It can actually help us、uh, mitigate risks, right? Yeah, I think. I mean, there are major risks that that、uh, are good to bear because they carry returns.、Uh, 
uh, major risk to be careful of. Um, going, going internationally will ex give the opportunity to Chinese uh, um, uh, pension investors mm -hmm. access to international markets, mm -hmm. US stocks, European stocks, some of the emerging markets even. But to be very careful when you do go overseas that you have currency risk uh, attached to that mm -hmm. and to try and manage your currency risk separately from your other asset risk, be it equities or, or bonds. Right. Diversification is very good and very powerful. I think you can reduce the volatility of your net assets by mm -hmm. um, easy 60% mm -hmm. from just taking an international focus and, uh, as opposed to just a domestic focus. Now let's talk about the specific investment products. You mentioned a actually a portfolio of, uh, of products, be, be it bank deposits or uh, bonds or even the equity market like stock market you mentioned. I almost think maybe over 90% of the funds should be invested into some fixed, some sort of fixed income investments like bank deposits or uh, bonds just, just to be safer, right? I think, you know, pension fund and pension liabilities tend to be very, very what we call long-tailed and long-horizon such that investing in, say, equity markets can be advantageous because over time they do outperform bond markets. Mm -hmm. Now, if, depending on the, the, the maturity or, or age profile, of the underlying risks, which are the you know the, when people expect to retire, right. the longer that age profile, you know, the, the more likely you are to be able to benefit from from investing in equities. Mm -hmm. If we were to take an example of, of say a U.S. pension fund, right. um, a defined benefit pension fund, which would be fairly similar to what we're talking about in China, maybe 60% equities would be uh, quite a uh, acceptable allocation. Mm -hmm. But no, no, noting that um, you know the year-to-year -year volatility in the equity market will be higher and just having a sufficient time horizon to, to, to bear that year-to-year -year risk mm -hmm. to ensure that over the long term you can earn a risk premium from, from those asset classes. Can you give us an example, a specific example, uh, say me, yeah. uh, I want to make an investment uh, yeah. for my future or uh, when I retire, so how should I make my investment, how should I build my portfolio? Well, Ms. Ching is very young, so um, you know you have a, lo a long, um, long way to go. A long way to go, hopefully, and God willing. Um, <laughs> and so I, th I think uh, you know someone in your position should be thinking about putting your assets aside for 20, 25, 30 years, mm -hmm. not touching it, not worrying about month-to-month -month volatility, and probably taking a good allocation to to equities in a diversified sense, mm -hmm. perhaps. 60 to 80 percent of your portfolio. Last year in the United States, cash was returning like one percent, um, which is not not a significant return. Mm -hmm. Whereas equity markets did quite considerably better than that. Um, and so we actually had to try and educate our own junior staff to think about investing for 40 or 50 years rather than you know, worrying about year-to-year -year volatility. Mm -hmm. And I think that that applies to you know, most people of our age. I think I'm a bit older than you, but of our age. And it's only when you get to be significantly o o older, mm -hmm. perhaps in late 60s or 70s, uh, when you actually are retired, to then think about reducing the volatility in your portfolio, selling some equities to buy bonds or, or fixed income instruments which offer more certainty of, of, of cash flow or more certainty of return from, from month to month or year to year. But even if we're talking about fixed income uh, mm -hmm. investments, they're still volatile, right? They, they sure. still have volatility. So what are the factors that can affect fixed income investment? Well, the level of interest rates um, you know, affects the volatility of fixed income and, and the maturity of the bond. Um, bonds which have longer maturities might have higher yields, but they also have potential to, to fluctuate more in, in, in value. A 30-year bond is, has almost as much volatility as the equity market, right. okay? And that's to be, you know, be very, very careful about you know, what sort of maturity of bonds you're investing in. Mm -hmm. for, for a standard investor, we would recommend maybe um, to invest across the yield curve mm -hmm. to accept some cash as well as some long-dated long right. bonds. Mm -hmm. Maybe have a portfolio duration of about three or four years, which is an average maturity mm -hmm. uh, of three or four years in, in, in your bond portfolio. Mm -hmm. For older investors or retirees, perhaps thinking about you know, more sort of short-term cash investments or out, out to maybe one, one or two years, mm -hmm. just to, because that reduces the volatility of, of, of the bond itself. Mr. Fisher added that equities in the long run tend to outperform cash by about 6%, and for those investors who have the time horizon, a significant equity premium can be earned over a long time period.